For the second year, the Olympic Peninsula celebrates the Bounty of Fall with a three-day apple and cider festival. And here to show us the sweet process of cider pressing is Danny Milholland. Thank yeah. you for being here. You know, we live in this age of like high-tech automation. It is so nice to see something like this. Yeah. How old is the like how long has this, this been used? This particular press was built by my friend Drew Hill, and I helped him build it about 10 years ago, I think wow. it was. And it's from a kit from the Happy Valley Ranch, and then we milled up a one piece of maple and built the press. Very impressive. Yeah. An impressive press, if you will. That's Thank you. really Thank terrible yeah. wordplay. Big, big ups to Drew. <laughs> okay, so yeah. show us how this works. Okay, so there's two phases to pressing, essentially. is crushing the fruit, which we'll do, and I don't know if you want to do a little bit of this, but wow. basically you should step in should here and crush the fruit. Just, this is like in lieu of gin. Yeah, give it a nice, there you go. Nice. Wow. Okay, that's kind of fun. So crushing a bunch of fruit, and then yeah. we've pre-crushed a little bit here, and then you basically press you um, press the fruit and slowly out comes the juice. This is a small batch, so it's not just pouring out like crazy, but it gives you the idea. Would it be inappropriate Whoop. for me there to stick my face down there and just let you <laughs> pour directly be into my, my mouth? Guess. You are welcome <laughs> I mean, to do that. Have you ever tried this at home? Be honest. Have you <laughs> ever just thought, you know, maybe it'll be the most fresh if I Put my face down there. Those are some juicy apples this time, I would say. Yes. And pour a little bit. Do you want me to try to press it, or is that, do we have, um, we have plenty? It was a pretty small batch, so there was plenty. All right, so cheers to this. Fresh yeah. press. Tell me about this festival. This is the second year. Now, how did it get started? Um, so the oh, festival good, The festival started last year. It was kind of, an, it grew organically from several different events that had been taking place for the past seven years. Um, and so it, it was kind of a collaboration with our local cideries and a number of other local people that wanted to make this festival happen. So ultimately it's a celebration of our fall bounty on the peninsula. It kicks off with a harvest dinner with local salmon, local vegetables, both hard and fresh pressed cider. Um, and then on Saturday we're having a cider saloon where we've invited cideries from all over Washington and one from Oregon to come out and show off their hard ciders. And we'll also on Saturday be having the, the fresh press going. Um, so that's gonna be a really exciting event. Yeah. And um, have some awesome cideries from rural areas and urban areas. Um, and then that night there's a big after party at Propolis Brewery with a fire show and DJs, kind of all, you know, big late night party. And then the following day, there's uh, an industrial cider pressing at Alpenfire Cidery. We have a, a touring cider press that travels to different orchards and does, you know, large scale pressing. Yeah, so I was going to ask, if, is this typical of cider pressing or there are bigger ones? For yeah, batches this is very like backyard, you know, you know, just for friends and family kind of cider press is not yeah. for industrial, you know, size pressing. Can we do more while you sure, show us how to do absolutely. it? Absolutely. And yeah. it, hard cider really is having a moment. It feels like the past few years is when more and more people have been realizing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It'll spit back at you. That's a all right. Bit. I'll just save that for later. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, cider has definitely had a renaissance in the past, you know, 12 plus years. Um, our, out on the Olympic Peninsula, we actually had some of Washington's first official cideries start. Really? Um, and here on the west side of the mountains, it's, you know, there's you think Washington apples, and most people are thinking east, east, of, east, the mountains. east of the mountains. Right. They're doing you know large-scale apple production, but early on in the settlement of Washington State, the West Side actually had more diversity in apples and more um, kind of apples growing. It wasn't until the dams went in that the East Side became really this big apple production region. So we have some of the most diverse varieties of apples, and even today we're pressing 13 different varieties of apples, which makes some of the best hard cider. So does so, it matter which kind you're using when you're pressing? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're going for, for just fresh juice to drink. Yeah. You know, any number of varieties is, is delicious, and they all vary in taste. Um, when you're going for hard cider, usually you're going for... Um, a more like heirloom apples, unique varieties of fruit, not necessarily the sweetest varieties. You're looking for bittersweet and semi-sweet. And um, I'm not the expert. I love pressing cider. I've been doing it since I was 15 years old. But if you come out to the festival, we ha you can meet 
cider makers from all over the state, as well as do orchard tours and you know be a part of actual cider pressing. So it's it's a unique opportunity to, you know, try a bunch of different types of cider and yeah. always and also get on the land and like have a really authentic experience. So. And what do people need tickets for, and what is free? So on Friday night we have the harvest dinner, and that's actually sold out. Okay. Um, on Saturday there's the farmers market in Port Townsend, which is huge. That's a free event. There will be chef demos using apples for particular you know meals um, and then that afternoon it's a ticketed event if you go to appleandciderfest.com you can buy tickets to the cider saloon and that gets you 10 tasting glasses and you can or 10 tastings um, and you can try out all the different ciders and there'll be a bottle shop with all the different ciders available um, there's a, an evening dinner at Port Ludlow that's like a very fancy dinner at okay. the fireside restaurant at the inn at Port Ludlow um, and so that's a ticketed event. Um, and then that evening is a free party at Propolis with the fire show and with DJs and kind of more of a party scene. Um, the following day, there's a plowman's breakfast and that's a ticketed event. That's $15 um, for a delicious breakfast. And then there's the cider pressings and seminars, which is free. You awesome. can just show up at Alpen Fire Cidery. And those start at, three, at noon, I believe. Okay. Um, and then that afternoon at Finn River, there's a World Apple Day celebration and they have a suggested donation of five dollars per carload of people um, and that's more, there'll be like apple juggling that's a really family oriented okay. celebration. So lots of ways to celebrate with you guys. Yes. Thanks for coming out yeah. and thank you for working out. Oh my gosh take, <laughs> take another drink of cider yeah. and uh, enjoy yourself there. The second annual Olympic Peninsula Apple and Cider Festival again is tomorrow through Sunday at all of those locations. We will link details and tickets to our website and after the break KISS FM's Carla Marie and Anthony Jump in for a weekly round of New Day Hot.